No, 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 this is the Ultraman show. Why are you playing with a common Rider toy? No. But, but why? Why are you playing with a common Rider toy during Ultra Ranger? First recording of 2020. Doesn't mean it's the first episode of 2020. Because someone fucked up! And I fuck up. No, you owe me. No. <laughs> Don't question how it just happens. It's 2020, everyone. It's, it's 2020. It's 2020. We already got nine, eight episodes we're gonna, out. We're going to be talking about 2020 Ultraman. Yeah, 2020 Ultraman. Gonna, gonna be talking about 20 Ultraman shows at once. Oh, no, God, no. Uh, Schwa the Roll Call. Hey, I say Schwa the Roll Call. No, I'm the host. Fuck you. No, I I say Schwa the Roll Call. No, I'm the host for the rest of the season. Schwa the Roll Call. <laughs> everyone and welcome to Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger, the show where we talk about uh, God, Ultraman's past, present, future, all, Godzilla and all Kaiju in between. I'm your host, Ultra Pink Castor Lady. That's right, everyone. I may be Grey Caster on Cast Ranger, but I will stay as Ultra Pink Caster Lane. Yeah, because we already discussed on Cast Ranger that Ultra Ranger takes place in, in a separate continuity. It, it's if I didn't join Cast Ranger and instead... Well, no, it's just... The, the events of Cast Ranger don't affect the events of Ultra Ranger. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay, interesting. If that makes sense. What if I did this? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll stab you through the belt. Straight through your dick. So, you're probably all wondering. No, we are not doing that. Aw, that would be funny. No. Aw. Well, welcome to episode 110. Yes, 110. You know, the episode that was supposed to be the final episode of 2019. But then someone was like, oh, sorry, I can't do it because I'm working. Well, also, we were waiting for you to edit the other episodes. That too. <laughs> and look what happened. I don't know. You've been busy with work. I've been busy with work. I've been... You've been busy with work. Is this, is this what happens when you're an adult? Yes. So what happens when you, when you don't have free time? Like, literally, my job doesn't let me, like, just makes me work all the fucking time because I've established such a good reputation there. Now I, now I envy unemployed Gar, besides from the whole no money thing. Yeah, back to no money Gar, you had lots of free time to do anything. You could edit Ultra Ranger all day and not care. The thing is, you've been trying to edit all these episodes, like, like multiple ones in a single day but like we know that you can't do that so if you just do one episode then you'll be fine yes um but yeah so we, we, we do apologize then again i probably apologize in other videos yeah but you know what it, it still makes up for the lack of uploading sorry that you guys had to suffer through just extra extra in Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. Whatever the fuck that is. I don't know. I, I don't know. Some show about some guy that yelled, that got mad at the producer or something. I don't know. Uh, and then you have Hero Cast, whoever the hell that is. I mean, hopefully one day they'll cross over with us. I, I mean, I'm expecting a, cri a crisis on infinite casters. That's not, yeah, that's after Civil War. Yeah, yeah, that's after... In, crisis on Infinite Casters. Yeah, Crisis on Infinite Just Casters. Where, where cooler, more deranged, crazy versions of ourselves are fucking show up. Because, like, there's that, like, there's Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne, and he was, like, in this, like, thing. Also, Ezra Miller showed up. Yeah, no, that was a fucking awesome, and it was a really funny cameo. Yeah. Barry, I'm Barry Allen. No! What? No. What's the Flash? Oh, also, I've been watching Monster Island Buddies. Yeah, oh my god, you're fucking obsessed with that. I, I, I put a link to it. Yes. My, so this is how I found out about the channel. 
my old coworker who used to work with me in the in the in the Humber Cinema group chat that we have on Facebook was just like, "Hey, Gar." Just, Monster Island Bunny. Yeah, yeah, just Monster Island but I don't know how she found it, or why. Well, she just probably saw it in a recommendation. Yeah, yeah, she probably just saw... And God, just thought of you. Yeah, like, she probably saw Godzilla, and she was probably like, Gar would like that, which I miss her. Like, like I didn't have it, like, like, there was no, like, thing between us. It was just... Yeah. I miss working with her. Yeah. Because we would always... Because we would both always be scheduled on Tuesday, so we'd spend, like, five hours... Like five to six hours chit chatting. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's cute. It's funny. It, it, it kind of has that stupid Mario Brothers kind of yeah. vibe to it. Why are we talking about stupid Mario Brothers on Cash Ranger? Never. Please. It has nothing to do with Toku. Yeah, it does. It's no, live no. action. No. They have light. They have lightsabers. I mean, beam swords. Ooh. I mean, the only joke I like from Super Mario Brothers is Bowser because he just talks in bra 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 bra. And when eventually they try to run up that hill, they do many times and they can't do it anymore because they're old. Yeah. That was funny. Um, and then they yeah. Killed, and then they killed Ash. I've just been, uh, for me personally, I've just been busy watching a lot of Parks and Recreation because it's a funny ass show and I'm almost done it. Um, and then after that, I'm probably gonna really try to focus on my Clone Wars binge because I want to watch all the Clone Wars, uh, watch all the Clone Wars, Rebels, and Resistance uh, fighter pilots or whatever the fuck it's called. Star Wars Resistance. Oh yeah. Um, all this year, and I also got to start on Ultra- Ultraman Cosmos. That's a lot of watching. And again, I'm the guy that's watching the last 13 Super Sentai seasons. Honestly, if I spend one day a week just binging, like, a lot of episodes, I can do it. So. So, yeah, Ultraman. So, like, before we started uh, recording this episode, we were both thinking, because, like, I'm looking at it right now. We haven't recorded an episode in a month. Almost. Yeah. So it's like, that's a solid four weeks of just no Ultraman altogether. Yep. It felt weird. Felt coming. long. Not long, but just... It, no, I had a one work week that felt like it was forever. Like it felt forever. It was Christmas week, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. Anyways, we're officially back. For now. For now. Hopefully we can... Get back on schedule. Well, just like I said, man, anytime you have free time, just, like, how long does it take you to have an episode, usually? Like, pre, like, pre-production? Like, like, getting all the thumbnails and such ready, plus editing the episode? At least six hours. Six hours? God damn. I like to be persistent. Yeah, that's true. Then you have Ichi over at Cast Ranger. Because he, it's because he doesn't do any editing. That why you think we live stream the episode. So, anyways, we're like eight minutes, and we might as well start talking about news. Because holy shit, we got news. Yeah, we we either decide on a big thing of news or a small thing of news. And I was like, no, nah, let's do a small thing. So of news. so we got a uh, in between news. Yeah, it's like a few news stories, but some small news stories. Mm-hmm. So I want to contradict myself. Cause I'm, in, Cause I'm a strip liar. Last episode, I talked, I said how, oh, there isn't going to be a movie exclusive form in, in the Taiga movie because they spent all the budget getting all the actors back. And then I remembered, oh yeah, Ultraman Rega is a thing. So you have a silhouette of him. Yes. He looks cool. In which he he's looks a, He's a double cool. horned Ultraman. He's a double horned Ultraman. In which I am going to scroll up quickly because my sister translated the uh, little the little word bubble that's right beside him. In which, so it is a mysterious ultra hero appears. It is he an ally or is he a villain? The secret will be revealed in the next month's issue. You can also try predicting his true identity. Also, Ultraman Taiga new movie is showing from March 6, 2020. Calling Stay it. Tuned. Calling it. Taiga's brother. Ta- Taiga has a long lost brother. You know what? That'd be cool. Or, or as I like uh, to predict, it's probably uh, just a fusion of all of them together. Yep. I and, can see that too, actually. 
It's not swollen enough though. Mm. We also got stills from uh, the live show from the uh, Ultra Expo, where Taiga has to babysit Baby Taro. Hmm? Oh yeah, and Andrew Melo showed up. Oh. You know, not Zafi. Oh, there's there's Taiga teaming up with Dan. Jonies. There's baby version of him. Or no, that's that's a. That's the angle. Yeah, let's try stirring him. That's his baby. That's baby Taro. Oh. Voiced by uh, Goku. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Rega looks cool from what I can see. Yeah, he we'll looks. We'll find out more about him later. We'll find more about him later on. Because we can. Yep. <laughs> Next. Next story. <laughs> Uh, SH Figuarts, uh, Ultraman Taiga Tristurium, uh, official images came out. I didn't grab the updated news story. Oops. Uh. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah, he looks pretty damn good. In which, also, while we were gone, uh, the rest of Ultraman Taiga got subbed, aside from the last few episodes of the audio drama, for some bizarre reason. Where's my, where's my audio drama? Everyone knows that's the best part of Taiga. It really is. It's the parts that we should see in live action, but we don't. Yeah. So anyways, if I could zoom in on this image. Uh, so, it'll be coming out uh, June... Or, yeah. It'll be coming out in June of this year for 7150 yen. So yeah, so this is going to be like $90. So, it's funny how Taiga is like 45 but like Tristerium is like fucking $90. Yeah, yeah, because there's more paint apps on $90. Plus the sword. The sword. But we know Titus. So that means Titus and Fuma may be on the way next. Hopefully. We're just getting all the Tiger shit out of the way. Where's Ultraman Ace? I'm dead. Oh. Alrighty. Uh, so... Since this year, so since December marked Ultraman Zero's and Belial's 10th anniversary, we have some uh, Ultraman Zero merch gained some releases. Hmm. So we have this thing called the Ultra Sound Figure Ultraman Zero and Belial. They stand at 290 millimeters tall and they have phrases because they have buttons on the back of them. There's a schwa in my boot. There's a schwa in my boot. Someone poison the land of light. Reach for the stars. Reach for the schwa. Reach for the schwa. Oh my goodness. Uh, so yeah, so we got Zero. We got Belial. Even I already had the figure of Belial, so I don't need any other figure of him. Apparently Belial is 500 yen ex more expensive. Yeah, because it's Belial. Everyone loves Belial. Uh, come with eight lines of dialogue. Again, 290 millimeters tall. I think when you press the button, their color timers light up. Because hmm. their color timers are... Uh, well, Belial's is painted, but Zero's isn't. Uh, both these figures will be released j in January 25th, 2020. 2020. You know, the date where this episode comes out. Oh, in a month. <laughs> wow. Hey, I can make jokes like that. Yes, you can. That's true. No, hopefully this episode comes up before then. I only got nine days. One episode a day. Oh, work wasn't in the way. Uh, we also have the DX Ultra Zero Eye re-release. So the original uh, Ultraman Zero transformation device will be coming out. And I'm glad because it also has its blaster form. Yeah, the blaster mode. That's kind of silly, but it's really cool. It looks stupid. You just go pew 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 pew. It, it looks really stupid. Oh, there's the comparisons between the two. Ah, cool. So yeah, uh, this item represents the transformation device used by Ultraman Zero's various hosts. From Ultraman Zero, The Revenge of Belial film, and Ultraman Saga. 
Uh, the same has two modes, zero eye mode and gun mode. And yeah, various sounds. It'll also be coming out January 25th for 2,800 yen. Hmm. Cool. I would like to have it. Honestly, me too. I don't think I have a zero device, but they're doing an X divisor, so yeah. I'm excited to get that. Moving away from toys, uh, we have the Ultraman X, Orb, and Rube uh, soundtracks available. Cool. So these not only include uh, the opening and ending themes, but they also include all the background music. Oh, uh, so we'll get like that song from Orb that we used for our old roll call? Yeah. No, no, that was from uh, Ginga S. Oh. That was Ginga S's ending. Oh. <coughs> uh, each soundtrack comes with over 20 songs on them. Like, one song per episode. Anyways, yeah, so we got all the soundtracks for X, Orb, and Rube, and... They're you know, already they out. Pretty good music, so... I wouldn't mind having having this so that I can have some background, some illegal background music that I can't afford. Illegal background music. Well, there's illegal background music. Illegal background music. Someone from Subaraya or whoever owns the music is going to be listening to one of the episodes in the future and they're going to be like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Hold the phone. Shut the front door. Oh, speaking of which... Zone Fighter is apparently fully subbed. Cool. You know, the Toku show from the 70s that included Godzilla in some episodes. You know, guess that didn't get, you know, usually when we talk about shows getting fully subbed on Extra Extra, guess no one was like, oh, fuck Zone Fighter. <laughs> oh, but let's talk about how people don't like Kamen Rider, but love it at the same time. I mean, I love it. You just want to prefer Toku. Next new story. Psst. So, Milk Creek Entertainment has announced the uh, uh, their next batch of Ultraman releases coming out in April. In which uh, it will be Ultraman Ace, the series. Ultraman X, the series. Plus the movie. And the Ultraman X, the movie, will be getting its own release as well. Cool. Now, the biggest thing that I'm hoping for is that the X movie comes with the dub. Because there was a dub of the X movie. I don't think so. It I probably just, won't. They're just focusing on the Japanese. That'll movies. probably get lost to time. But I am very upset that we'll probably never hear it. Ever again. Because I only saw that once. I'm okay with that. The doves are really cringy. You're you're super cringy. Yeah. Yes, I am sometimes. You're very much right. Uh, no news yet about prices. Are you going to get Ace? No. You know I'm not going to get any of the show Ultra. Yeah, stick. of course I'm going to get Ace. Like, I'm going to get all of them. Also, there's a typo in this. Saying that Ultraman X came out in 2007. Uh, there was Ultra 7X in 2007. But not Ultraman X. That's funny. Is a fan favorite entry that features several cameos from previous Ultra Heroes. Yeah. Because, I mean, look at the cover of Ace. Look who's on it. It's Zoffy. Yeah, it's Zoffy. Your favorite. Oh my goodness, it's Zoffy, my favorite. Ace. Yeah, Ace's design is cool looking. I like Ace's design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Series fight will make this roll around. Leo Series and Astra? Blech. You know what? No. You don't have to look at the main one. No, yeah, I hope I don't. Well, we're going to have to talk about the show. Fuck. Yeah, we'll see. See how long I'll train to last for. Oh, I'll keep it running if you leave. No, you won't. Yeah, I will. I'll keep it going. You'll find another partner. It'll be the Ultra Ranger show. 
Hi, I'm 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 Auto Guard the Ultra Ranger. The old yeah. Hi, I'm Guard the Ultra Ranger. How you doing? Oh uh, no, really exciting. I'm yeah, glad, I'm glad Milk Creek is still putting these out. But well, where's yeah. my Dinah? Well, where's my Cosmos? It's funny how you say, "Oh man, I'm glad Milk Creek is still doing these." Yeah. Because it's not like they own the entire franchise. No, but it, they might, if they don't, these don't do well, they might lose the right to the franchise. Well, no, because they said the entire franchise will be coming out. Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter, no matter what. Hmm. The entire franchise is coming out. You know, it's not like with Hasbro and Super Sentai right now, where Hasbro wants more money, even though we we're so close to getting Sentai exclusive DVDs, you son of a. Anyways, next news story. I'm going to my room now. <laughs> um. So guess what? Fuck. Uh, fuck us. Do you like? Do you like Gamera Gar? Yeah. Do you, Do you want to watch all the Gamera movies? Yes, I would like to actually finally talk about all the Gamera. Would movies. you like them on a Blu-ray set? You know what? High quality Gamera series? I wouldn't mind that. Well, too bad. It's going only available in England. What? Yeah, it's only available in the UK. Yeah, so get this. There is a complete Gamera Blu-ray box set coming out this year. Exclusively in the UK. All 12 films. Presented in a new 4K remaster. Wow. All 12 films from 1965's Gamera the Giant Monster all the way up to 2006's Gamera the Brave. And that even includes the famous 90s trilogy. Gamera the Gamera Guardian of the Universe, Gamera Attack of Legion, and Gamera Revenge of Iris. Wow. I wonder if this includes the really terrible 1980 Gamera movie. Maybe. That one wasn't even a movie. Um, yeah. I've only watched one Gamera movie. And that was the first one. Oh, well, good. same. But we'd like to watch all of them. Maybe during the summer. Like we promised last Like we promised last <laughs> summer. Well, I think it was two summers ago. We decided oh that. my goodness, we keep failing on our promises. I know. But no, Gamera's a cool dude. He fights for children. He's a tur. He's a fucking turtle. He is a turtle. That's uh, what I really. You know, well, I'll even post a picture of my drawing that I did of Gamera mm. recently. Don't even make us get into when they were gonna make a new movie and then they canceled it because they're like, yeah, we're not gonna make money off of this. Oh no, Gamera or no Godzilla's gonna fucking kill us. Yeah, it doesn't matter though. You should still release it anyway. Get obliterate us in the box office. When's Gamera coming to the MonsterVerse? No, never. Yes. What's Gomer coming to the MonsterVerse? Never! Oh, uh, imagine Gomer fighting Godzilla. Why would Gomer show up because before Gomer Gamera? Gomer is the greatest kaiju of all time. What if Ultraman showed up in the MonsterVerse? That'd be good. Ultraman fighting Godzilla? I mean, he's already has. Fuck yours. And Michael Sarah plays plays the Ultraman host. Oh my god. That, that's so random. Uh, Shwa, you guys. Oh, guys, I'm, uh, 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 Ultraman. I'm Jonah Hill as Ultraman. Holy shit! All right, let's fucking go. You and me, yeah, right now. 2007's Jonah Hill. Why the fuck did you choose Pop Belante? Belante. Go watch Monst Island Monster Buddies. Every episode's only like a minute to like three minutes long. God, this is gonna be like a movie where it's like an hour. I I watched a hundred episodes. Jesus Christ! <laughs> There's 120 episodes, and I watched. Almost the entire show. Fucking God. In like a day. Wow. Uh, but yeah, come on. Fucking bring this Arrow Films. Bring it over out here. I mean, we could just... Just give it to sell, to mil sell the rights to Mill Creek. I, I mean, we could just buy this. Would it work on our Blu-rays? Isn't the PS4 region free? Oh, yeah. You know, we could just buy the set and okay. then play it with the Blu-ray player. How much is it going to be? It doesn't say. Well, fuck! <laughs> But but grand that grand that there's twelve movies and they're all four K re four K remasters. I'm doing giant air quotes with the four K because I don't know if Daie or Toho because I think Daie got bought up by Toho because Daie went bankrupt and that's why there was never a Gamera versus Godzilla movie. So is Toho own the rights to Gamera? 
I think they. No, no, I think Dye is still its own thing, but they're. It's like, it's like 20th Century Fox if, with with Disney. What if what if Toho just has plans when they get back the rights to Godzilla? What if they're just like, hey, how about this MonsterVerse uh, we're making? Why don't we just include Gamera? And then we'll have a proper Godzilla versus Gamera movie. Well, here, here's the thing, though. Ever since the dawn of time, or at least ever since these two characters have been around, Toho has never given a shit about a Godzilla vs. Gamera movie. I think that'd be awesome to watch, though. Like, every, you know everyone would love to see that. Because there's Gamera fans out there. There's people who probably prefer Gamera over Godzilla. Oh, fuck Godzilla. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, and then somewhere out there, there's an alternate universe where Gamera was the success... And Godzilla wasn't. So we were going to get Shin Godzilla, and it was going to be an awesome movie, and then they canceled it because they're like, oh, we can't fucking compete with Gamera. And then they made Legendary Shin, they made, they, Yeah, they made Shin Gamera. <laughs> they made Shin... No, no Gamera Resurgence? Yeah. So, so that means Gamera got the shitty anime trilogy? Just... He's, that, fly, he's flying, just... Hey, what? <laughs> he starts flying. And then that means Gamera fought King Kong? So, who knows? If this is a pretty affordable box set, then maybe Gar and I will buy it, and then we will watch all of the Gamma movies. Eh, actually, you know what? Fuck it. Let's buy it. it or out. if, you know, if you support us on Patreon, maybe we can get it. Nah, we can buy it. Yeah, support us on... If it's like, if it's like a hundred, if it's twelve films, that's probably, like, gonna be, like, a hundred bucks. I'm least expecting a hundred. 100, 120. If it's like 200 pounds. And then, and then it'll be an extra bit for shipping, but like if we go have some on it, then we can afford it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, go, watch, go watch the original Gamma movie. It's good. Weren't we supposed to go have these on all the Ultraman Blu ray sets? Yeah, something like that. Uh, I just bought Jeep because I wanted to support Jeep. Yeah. Well, fine. I guess I'll go buy all of them. <laughs> yeah. um, I can't believe he bought the whole thing. And is that for news, I guess? Yeah, that's it for news. Okay. Unless you want to talk about the quick three news stories. No, we'll talk about them uh, next time. All right, fine. We'll talk about them next time. But for now, we got Ultraman. Yay! I got to stop doing the gore stories voice. Schwa. Schwa. So episode thirty three, the Forbidden World. How is it forbidden? We don't leave Earth aside from one shot. Uh, it's the Forbidden World of Methylus. So yeah, we get introduced to Alien Methylus. Yeah, the, time. yeah, the malicious alien. Remember he was an orb. Remember he was like leading all those other guys. Darkness five. Yeah. Well, no, that was that wasn't an orb. That was in the zero. No, fight an two. orb. Orb. He got killed by Juggler. Yeah, an orb. He got killed by Juggler. Juggler stabbed him, and they're like, "What the fuck, dude?" And he's like, "Yeah, whatever. You you." I, I control you now. They're like, okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. All that for a fucking card. So, we get introduced to Fuji's little brother, Satoru, a.k.a. not Hoshino. Oh, fuck him. No, no, because legit, I feel like this was definitely intended for Hoshino. Yeah, but then he broke his legs. But then Hoshino broke his legs while skiing. Like, Hoshino's actor, so he's... He's gone throughout the rest of the show. He never showed up for the third third half of the of the series. Yeah. Um. So rest see, rest in peace, Hoshino, so wherever you ended up. So we see a flying boat. A boat's a boat, but but the mystery box can be anything. Could be even be a flying boat. Could be even a flying boat. Um. So and, yeah. And then the boat explodes. It explodes. It gets sent. It's, it's, it's debris gets sent into space. And then Hayata and Fuji and Satoru, like, end up, like, getting caught in the space as well, and they get captured by Mephilus. Um, Which Mephilus' design is really good. Yeah, no, it's really cool. Very sleek. Um, so, apparently Mephilus' whole reason he's here is because he wants to uh, Give me the get, get, get control of Earth. So he keeps asking Sat Satoru if he can, he can give up Earth. 
And like Thor's like, no, he's like, oh, but I can make you immortal. And he takes him to space, and he's like, there's vast amount of planets out there that have no war, no confrontations. You could be like a god. You could be rich. You could be ever like living forever. I can give. I can give you. I can give you power, money, women, men. men? <laughs> um, and then uh, like Rashi Day and uh, Cap are going around like trying to uh, answer a disturbance, and then all of a sudden we see Fuji, giant, walking around the city. Fifty meters tall. That was a quite a shocker. I feel like this is a reference to Attack of the Fifty. Fifty foot woman. Yeah, fifty foot woman. I would not. I would not doubt it. No, so now I'm thinking about when that movie come out. Not the song. Why is there a song? Fifty foot woman. Oh no! They're going yeah. to New York. Nineteen fifty eight. Yeah, yeah nineteen fifty eight. So it was a thing. Hosts of a Ghoulie presents the cult horror film from 1954 featuring Allison Hayes and William Hudson. Is this kind of a kaiju film? Yes. Should we, should we talk about this? Oh my god. Ranger? Oh my, oh my goodness. Is that a Godzilla reference? That has to be a Godzilla reference. That, I, I think we gotta talk about this. I feel like we have to talk about this too. Oh, I feel I mean, like. It'd be, it'd be good variety. This is. I guess, I guess, I guess this fifty foot woman would be considered one of the kaiju in between. Oh, there's definitely a kaiju in between there, if you know. Hey, what what's I mean. her name? Go to the cast. <laughs> I, so I Allison Hayes is Nancy Fowler Archer. If that's actually her. Okay. Uh, anyways, anyways, sorry for going off topic. Yeah. So in a future episode of Ka- uh, Kaiju Central <laughs> Ranger, we'll talk about Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman. Because why not? Uh, but yeah, so Fuji's walking around. Oh my goodness. It's, I'm sorry, but there are sequels. The Amazing Colossal Man, War of the Colossal Beast, and The, the Incredible Incred- Shrinking Man. Yeah, and then eventually in the 80s they made The Incredible Shrinking Woman. Oh my god. I, I, I've seen the, American, uh, the Incredible Shrinking Woman. And then they remade this movie called Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Also Colossal. We are colossal. We still gotta watch that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, Fuji's walking around, fifty meters tall. Uh, but you can... and you, you you can see Arashi and Ide's dicks. Like no joke, you can see their package, like in the uniform. Yeah. I'm sorry, I gotta bring that up, but it leads into something else that I am bringing up later on. Um, but yeah, so we find out that Fuji, it's not actually. Oh, no, it's not it, it's, it's like a robot. Me- Mephilus. Well, it's not even a robot. Well, it's like a projection. Yeah, it's like a hallucination? Yeah, well, it's like, it's like a... It's like a hologram? Yeah, it, no, it's, a, it's like a hollow projection. That's what I would call it. It's a projection. But it like can her. touch things. Yeah, it's like a physical... It's like, yeah, it's like in the Star Wars comic when, like, this guy revives uh, Darth Maul. Uh, like, he has his brain, but he makes him a living hologram. So, like, he attacks Luke Skywalker even though he's a hologram. So it's, it's really weird. I'm glad they didn't go that route with them in the actual series. Um, so yeah, so Fuji's just going around. They're trying to convince her. And then Hayata encounters Mephilus. And he's just like, he's like, it's like, ah, Ultraman, you think you can stop me? And he's just like, yeah. You're breaking Ultra Law. Yeah. You, so uh, are you, you son of a bitch. Yeah, and he's like telling him I'm going to stop you. And so he tries to transform, but then he like freezes him in the middle of it. And Mephilus is like, <laughs> I need that. Ultraman. Uh-huh, suck a dick, Ultraman. Um, eh, yeah. fuck you. So just a lot of this is just like, you know, the, the armed military tries to attack Mephilus' ship, and like, he just fucking blows him out of the sky, and... There's a random scene where Mephilus summons, like... Different kaijus. Yeah, like, we have a third alien, Bolton. Yeah, it's Bolton, he's got uh, one from Ultra Q. Yeah, uh, Ke- uh, Kevin Saliba. Second. There's it's, a Rob. Yeah, so it's third generation Bolton. Second generation alien Zarab, and second generation cameraman oh, or Camoon? Ke- cameraman. Cam Camoon? Uh, let's just say uh, camera. Anyway, like cameraman. they like they all show up, and I'm thinking, oh boy, Ultraman's gonna have to fight these guys. Nope. Nope. Disappear. He he was just using it to scare them. He's just nope. like, oh, um, and then so he keeps trying to convince uh, Satoru to like give up Earth, and like I'm like, why do you think this kid has like the ability to give up Earth? Because I come from a polite planet where we ask for things. 
may I have your earth? Um, so obviously he's like, no, fuck you. And eventually, uh, Rashi, they and Cap, they all go up there to uh, Mephilus' ship to save them. Which uh, they do, but they're like they're like floating in gravity or whatever like that. And yeah, they stop them. Because uh, uh, Mephilus has the has a anti-gravity technology. Yeah. That's how all the ships, that's how the boat and all the jets and the science patrol car ended up in space. Yeah. And then uh, they find Hayata and they find him mid, like, try, him trying to transform with the beta capsule. Okay. But then, they, but then they're like, oh shit, we don't have time to get him out. Like, we gotta leave. Fuck you, assholes. Yeah, but they they clearly know he's ultra. They know. They know. Like, he had the beta capsule in hand. They didn't acknowledge it. It's just, oh, he's what? Because like we watched the first episode, like I watched the first episode of the Ultraman anime on Netflix, and like literally, like Edig says to him, like, "We've always known." What? Because yeah. like we were, we always wondered, like, when you came back after we defeated Zeton, why you didn't, like, why you didn't remember anything that happened that past year. So. Well, it's not even like it. It wasn't necessarily that. It was more or less they knew he was Ultraman. They just didn't want to say anything because then... They didn't the, want to get in trouble and... Like, the government... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but... Um, ruined his life forever. Exactly. Let's just all go along with it. Yeah, so he, go, so he turns an Ultraman and he starts fighting uh, Mephilus. And which, and, like, oh, I'm sorry. Just, 60s Ultraman. Like, yeah, I know like the suit... The suit's been iconic, and, like, like the suit's such an iconic design, and, like, like we've gotten better at making the suit over time. But just seeing the suit in the original show, like, this is the third suit they're using. Pepsi. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know. It looks I good. love just how old school it looks, yeah. in a sense. Um... So he's fighting Mephilus, but this is an interesting fight. They fight for a bit, like, they fly in the air, they shoot beams at each other, and then just, like, Mephilus realizes, he's like, yeah, you know what, the Earth's not worth it, I'll be I'll be back again. Like, you haven't seen the last of me. You are a fair opponent, Ultraman. Yeah, and so he just... He... But I have lost to a child. Fucking prick. <laughs> so, yeah, so he disappears, and, like, they're questioning why, like, Ultraman didn't finish him off. And it's like, nah, it doesn't need to. He's an honorable guy. The Ultraman's just like, uh, uh, okay. Um, and then he comes back as Hayata, and it's like, oh, well, that was a thing. You guys almost let me die. Right? Why did you let me die? But yeah, Hayata was... That, that was honestly a pretty good fight with Ultraman Mephilus. Because it wasn't just a straight up like brawl. It was kind of like they knew, like they had a counter attack for everything. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna throw my like my spacium, a uh, spacium bl blade at you. Well, I'm gonna have to block it with my electricity attack. Mm -hmm. It's like they, they both know. Like Mephilus even acknowledged like we're both equally matched. That we're not gonna win this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, Mephilus was really cool. He was. A little... Very kind of like on Ultraman's level in terms of intelligence. So, so what? And what's the story? Did, what story did we learn? Don't trust fucking aliens. Never trust aliens ever. <laughs> Don't give up your planet. Don't give up your day job. Don't give up your day job. There, there's more jobs out there. Yep. Except for Hoshino. Um. So yes, this episode was alright. Like Mephilus did stand out the most in my mind. So for this episode, so that's good when uh when a villain like this like really pops and like stays in your mind yeah so and then you know that sad moment when like we're watching this and i'm just i just look over at lane and say dude we only got six episodes left we do only have six episodes left it's fucking surprising we only have six, well ultraman was only 39 episodes yeah <laughs> what sucks is i've already seen the last episode but it's been a long time since i've seen it well so. think of it this way you like you're gonna watch the final episode with a full series worth of context. Yeah, full context of like, okay, how did they get here? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So now to 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 to
So, episode 33 of Tiga, the Vampire City. So, this is about vampires. Okay, first off, this didn't include Edward Cullen. So, 0 out of 10. Um, Mo and the Vampire wasn't in it either. So, 0 out of 10. Um, Gary Oldman's Dracula wasn't in it. Was uh, also, 5 brownie points for all of you who know who Mo and the Vampire are. You are a true Canadian child from the 90s. Yep, Mo and the Vampire. Uh, what other obscure vampire reference... Uh, Fangula wasn't in it, so zero out of ten. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this was a Commander Moon Munakata episode. Yeah, Munakata, and he was hanging out with his uh, friend, Mister Udona. Udona. Because we've seen him before, where they had a couple episodes where, like, he went to that same bar, sat down with them, and talked to them about shit. Was that the same guy? The same guy. So he's a reporter. Oh. Yeah, so he's just talking to him about like what to talk about in the news and stuff. I didn't um, realize that was the same character. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so basically there's vampires going around and sucking people's blood and turning them into vampires and they're fucking shit up and we find out that it's uh, Udana's like friend who's uh, was like okay. kind of like her, her his pupil. And so... He's a lover. Nah, I wouldn't say lover. I'd say pupil. Um, maybe lover. I don't know. Um, so he talks about, with Munakata, just, like, the history about them. And it's like, well, we had the story we had to, about vampires that were, like, showing up in South America. So I didn't believe it, but I sent her to go report on the story because she was so interested in it. And she ended up becoming a vamp, getting killed because there was, like, an infection in the a village... And she got turned into a vampire and started killing people. And now she's back. And she's turned more people into vampires. And then they made a band. Yeah, no, like, we'll show, we'll show an image in the, in the episode, but, like, there, wait, there's a, there's, they're all wearing, like, black with, like, these fucking hats and then sunglasses because, oh you know, and they're only out at night because vampires are weak to sunlight. What were their name? The Hex Girls from sure. Scooby-Doo. Sure. I was expecting I, but, you to get that. No, reference. my Scooby Doo knowledge isn't that great. Oh, I've only watched like the original show, the live action movies, which I really enjoy thoroughly, and <laughs> and uh, the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, which so they brought that back. Yeah, they brought that. Yeah, they finished that up for a movie. Yeah. But yeah, this was definitely a bizarre episode. But it was fun. TV. I really, I really enjoyed myself. Like, freaking, uh, the commander almost got fucking killed, too. Well, like, yeah, Captain Aruma got injured in battle because of the vampire. Yep. Which leads towards, you know, Munkata having to take control. Take command. Yeah, take command. Hori, what you got? I got a laser cannon. Yeah, so he, Hori developed these fucking, uh, laser guns that, like, deploy ultraviolet rays and, like, cause the sunlight like, to fire out of them so they can kill the vampires. But I swear to God, they just reminded me of the fucking phaser rifles from, uh... Oh, they, like, not exactly, but they kind of look like them. So, like, there's a phaser rifle from Star Trek, like, the top one. Okay. Kind of looks like it. Kind of not really. Not, not by much, but, like, a little bit, so... Yeah. And, like, I, I just love how, so, so, like, Reina, Daigo, Shinjo, Hori, and Munkata all go out to, like, where the vampires are hanging out. And they're straight up murdering all of them. Yep. With these laser guns. Yep. Or ultraviolet ray guns. Yeah, and they just, they get turned to flames and stuff like that. Um, so then eventually they encounter the, the Udana's, like, friends, like, her, his pupil. And she's about to, like, literally sink her teeth in uh, Udana, but then, like, something, like, kind of comes over and she kind of regains her humanity for, like, a few minutes. And then sacrifices herself. Yeah, and she realizes that she can't really, like, you know, live a normal life because she's a vampire. So she exposes herself to some sunlight and he gets really upset about it because, like, you know, he didn't want to lose her. Um, and then Daigo gets sucked into a coffin. Like yeah, they, they, they find this like traditional ass fucking vampire coffin. Yeah, because they find uh, the monster of the episode, the blood sucking demon beast Curanus. And 
he looks super cool. He, like, he looks like, he, he's like Man Bat. Yeah, he's like, he's, it's, he's heavily like Man Bat from uh, Batman. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, they enc- he encounters, like, the head vampire, I guess. And he's like, ha ha ha, we're gonna fuck you all up and turn the entire world to vampires. And then, and like, some... turn it into Tiga in here because it's all darkness in here. Fuck you. Yeah, so he can't, he can't turn to Tiga. And, uh, it was funny because, like, this was kind of a reference to episode 33 of Ultraman. Yeah, yeah, like, similarities with, like, the they both got captured by the main villain and they can't transform in their little secret base. Yeah. Um, but then some light sheds through the, like, a crack in the coffin, like an opening, and so, like, the, the head vampire is like, no, fuck, he, he dies. Oh, shit, the stunt. So then, uh, uh, Kiranos turns into, like, turns bigger and shoots out of the coffin, and then, uh, Daigo turns into Tiga. And then, and then they fight. They fight. Um, they fight. I was actually really expecting Tiga to go sky type, so I'm surprised he didn't. Yeah, well, I, I could, I could have seen it because Kiranos can also fly. Yeah, but he ended up, he ended up uh, freezing the uh, like the uh, kaiju in the air, and then he used his main beam attack to defeat him. Uh, the Zapalian ray. Zapalian ray. Um. And like, oh yeah, Kiranos made it like dark and cloudy so that he could be outside. Yeah, that was pretty clever. And then like once they defeat the monster, just like the clouds. Yeah, G- guts help them too by like shooting him down with his uh, with their vehicle lasers. Fire the freaking laser! Have you ever seen a shark with a laser? So then uh, they tell Udana, and it's just like it's like, hey man, like we'll everything will be all right. And he's just like, yeah. Oh yeah, he went to go help because he jacked one of the freaking. Oh my god! Yeah. Ray guns. So he 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 got one of the ray guns, and we get the. I can't believe I forgot about this. It's so, so stupid. And he says the best fucking thing. He just aims at the at Kiranos and he just goes, Say cheese! And just shoots him. And like, it took me like five seconds to process that that just fucking happened. And like, I was like, I was he, trying to laugh, but it was like too funny to he, laugh at. He was summoning his Ash Williams from Evil Dead. Yeah, so the thumbnail is just going to be like Ash Williams like fighting Kiranos, but he's just going to have Udana's head on it, all over his body. Hey, jeez. So then, um, so then, uh, Munakana goes to the bar that, like, they usually hang out in, and it's like a basement bar, I think, it looked like, a, at least. Yeah, it's roughly like a basement bar. And they find, uh, Iruma there. Yeah, Iruma walks in, and she's and I think, like... I think they have a thing for each other. Well, they fuck. They, they fucked. <laughs> um, so then, like, the bartender's uh, like, oh, the... you guys are cute, uh... let me take a picture of you guys. Cha-ching. Yeah, it's like... That, that feels like a cameo. Yeah, and he puts on the wall. Who is it? Who is that guy? Oh, he's just a special effects director. Yeah, and he puts on he puts on the wall puts on a wall of other photos of like other people, and you see Udana with his pupil there. Um, and I that, see that, I, I see no one flashing themselves while taking the picture. Um, and that was the episode, and, but it was it was really fun, very very horror based, and the 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 kaiju was cool. Definitely a good Halloween theme episode. Yeah, even though it's April. Yeah, April 19th, 1997, the episode came out on. Doesn't matter. You can watch it at Halloween time. Exactly. With the same episode where Raina dresses up as a cat. And the same episode where she fucks a dolphin. So this is fuck a dolphin. I think she was just being funny. Her boyfriend's a dolphin. Lucky... The episode where she strips down and swims with a dolphin. Not all the way down, but she at least strips out of her uniform. And a bathing suit, and I was just like... You had a bathing suit on this entire time? Yep. Um, yeah. So that was a fun episode. I really liked it. I also enjoyed the episode. Then again, I probably enjoyed this these episodes because we just haven't seen... Or we just haven't watched anything in like No, I know. You've, you've, you've been talking about how much you've been wanting to rewatch more Ultraman, so. I won't watch Ultraman. So let's start talking about Gridma. Uh, 
episode 29, a pet dog bomb operation. So this is about doges. Dogs. Doges everywhere. <laughs> 101 dumb 101. Hey, guess, hey, guess what, Gart? What? You love Shinobi, right? Yeah, on, on, I, I was kind of upset that they brought him back. Yeah, well, they brought him back again. Uh, uh, oh, oh, what do we do? What do we Give do? Give nunchucks and make him sound like Bruce Lee. Oh. Now, he's, now he's Kung Fu Shinobilar. Yeah, but he's still the ninja monster Kung Fu Shinobilar. Yep. Uh, so this Shinobi episode, so Takashi was pissed off this week because he accidentally got scared by a dog and then he scared this noodle guy and he got noodles all over him and so he got pissed off and he's like, well, I'm going to cause all these dogs to go on a fucking killing, killing spree rampage to you, kill everyone. You know what this show needs? It needs a laugh track. Right? Um, so Daichi wants to get a dog, but his mom won't let him because she had a bad experience with a dog when she was dating on a date with her with the father, and she got bit in the hip. Ouch. Yeah, so she's kind of has a fear, uh, like a phobia of dogs. Dogs. And she just knows that Daichi wouldn't take care of it because they had a bird before, and the bird uh, ran off because he opened the door. I did not catch that part at all. Yeah, no, he had, like, it's like, yeah, you can't fucking take care of a pet. Um, and then, so, we meet one of Yuka's friends, and she has a dog named Ram. And it's a cute little white puppy. Because, of course, the dog is named after a computer piece. Yeah. Um, and the dog's really cute, and it has, like, this electronic collar thingy on it that lets it, like... Uh, destroy fleas and find out if it has fleas and uh, can track it. Is this a real thing? Uh, nothing to that degree, but there are tracking collars and stuff like that. Um, so Takashi hacks into them and uh, makes them make the dogs go into like a killing rampage. So they start like hunting and like attacking people. And Ram actually attacks the girl, like her, his owner. And like bites her, and then uh, so then talk, uh, Conte Shafar is like, Oh, we should make this worse. We should turn all the, the dogs into like ticking time bombs, and they can explode. And even talking, she was like, Dude, that that's harsh. Dark. Yeah, and he's like, Well, fuck you, you're gonna do it anyway. More, more mind control. Yeah, oh no, the mind control's wearing off. Um, Better. so then, yeah, so the Naruto and friends they go to. Fight uh, Shinobi Liar. That's great, man. And he's equally matched because, you know, martial arts skills and such. Yeah, well, he's having a bit of a hard time, but then uh, eventually, Great Man turns into King Great Man. And yeah. he has an upper advantage. Because Dino, not Dino Great Man, Dino Dragon shows up. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, let's do it. Come at me, bitch. So then, like, there, there's just scenes where, like, uh, like Yuka's trying to, like, uh, she, the, the friend realized, thinks she has to sacrifice herself by, like, blowing up herself and the dog. And Yuka's just like, no, are you fucking stupid? And, like, slaps her in the fucking face. Dog's and, a family member. You. Yeah, dog's family member. Don't just give up on it like that. So, she, Yuka decides to sacrifice herself to, like, save the dog and the, the girl. And she did it. And, uh, just as Gridman, like, King Gridman defeats Shinoblar. The bomb, um, or the, the bombs yeah, are The bomb does deactivates. So like yay. So so Romy this how is the collar supposed to explode when there's no like explosive material inside the collar? Well no, it would just it would just over overheat, overheat the, the chips or something inside and cause it to explode. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it was it was just blowing up the dogs because the dogs are fucking evil. Dogs Pongo, is that you? Talking about Pongo. Do where's where's my rapping dog? Pod time! It's pod time! Oh, random dogs in tokusatsu shows. Why? There's nothing much with this episode. Why? But we got, we got one more episode. That's episode 30. The Day of the World Destruction. In which, holy shit. Are there problems with this episode? So, oh, yeah. this episode involves a virtual fortune teller that will predict your future or your current thoughts in which Takashi gets to it and he wants to know what Yuka likes. In which apparently she was born in 1978. 
and this show came out in 1993, so they are roughly... 14. 14, 14, 13 to 14. Like 14, 15. Yeah, like 14, 15. And, uh, it's like, oh, Yuka likes guys with blonde hair and, like, biking outfits biker outfit. and stuff like that, too. And fucking Takashi does it. He looks terrible. He looks absolutely awful. Terrible. Absolutely awful. I don't know when they dyed his hair for this episode. Well, they used to, like, fake dye because it wasn't real blonde hair. Yeah, it was I could tell. pretty that, bad. That's why, he had, like, at the end of the episode, he had it back to normal. Um, but yeah, then he, like, so he dresses up and Yuka just completely ignores him, and I think he does, she does it on purpose, because, like, how could you not notice that? Like, how could yeah. you not legit notice that? And plus, this is episode 30, and I'm just thinking, okay, there's nine episodes left. When are they actually gonna interact? Exactly. Um, so, but then he accidentally meets the wrong Yuka, and it's just, like, kind of, like, mid-30s, late 30s, like, gay man. And he has the hots for Takashi and starts like smooching on him and seducing him and it's really creepy. And I think they do something like that in Gritman. A Subraya show. But then, of all the things, in the official legal version of this episode uh, of Denko Chojin Gridman, the subtitles are and I quote so I gotta bring this up. Got harassed by the gay. It's, it's the, the machine's machine fault. fault. I was sexually harassed by that gay. Who had the stroke while, while putting in the script? Yeah. <laughs> so that was fucked up. Uh, it was just kind of an uncomfortable scene, like that kind of seduction. Especially in a show like this, like the, it felt uncomfortable. Like at least, at least in like Gaim with like Oren Piero Alfonso, like yeah, we could tell he was gay, but like yeah, but he wasn't like trying to be like, like, trying to like seduce like Grid hey, hey, Gridon. Please make love to me. Yeah, no, like the no. only time he showed like love and interest was towards Zangetsu, and that's because he didn't know who the fuck he was. Ooh, I, I, my, my, like my, he was my, an actual challenge. My white melon. His white knight. Yeah. Well, I called him his White Melon. Oh, did he? Yeah. Probably was White Knight. Um, so, yeah. Um. Con Digifier starts screwing around with the fortune teller Yeah, machine. so he, send, he sends the Kaiju, uh, Jubagon into, into the fortune teller machine, and he turns the fortune teller into Con, Di Con Digifier. And so, people start going up to it, and one of them is, uh, uh, Ife's sister, yeah, um, Kana. And pretty much she has a crush on Naoto. Just who the fuck doesn't have a crush on Naoto these days? Like, my oh, god. Oh my goodness, he, he, he's such a tech whiz. Yeah. Um, and also, if you didn't realize that Yuka and Naoto like each other, oh my god, so fucking obvious. Oh, forget. Like, like, the fortune teller says like oh, to Yuka, oh, you, there's a guy in a red shirt who really likes you, and he likes you back, and really cares about you, and... Naoto's and, wearing and, a red shirt. Yeah, and, like, Ipe's just looking over, and Yuka just goes, nah, fortune teller machines will say anything. And I'm just thinking, like, I, I just love, loved it if it was hilarious. It's like, oh, um, oh, a boy in a red shirt really likes you. And then, like, next shot, you see, you see Naoto shirtless. Or, like, Daichi has a red shirt, and he's like, eh. Or, like, an old man, old pervy man has like a red a shirt. <laughs> I'm naked! Um, so, Kondishfire tells the sister... Kill, kill them all. No, no, no. Kill any girl that likes Naoto, and he'll be yours. So, she goes and attacks Yuko with a fucking aluminum bat, hits her wrist... And, like, Naruto thankfully fucking comes in on time and just goes, Yo, bitch, the fuck you doing? Goofy, then, what are you doing? So then he, I'm prepping my choking hand. So then he goes to check out the uh, machine, which then Con Digifire just tells him, Oh, you don't want to be Gridman. Gridman's scary. You'll die. Yeah, you'll die a horrible death. So he just kind of goes off and broods somewhere, and, like, they find him. And they're just like, what the fuck, man? Like, Gridman oh. needs your help. They're... It's not the weirdest thing, no. Just, no, it's his dad. Oh, yeah. He goes he... up to the machine. Yeah, and Con Digifier just says to him, 
Yeah, you don't want to work your job anymore. Quit your job. Do whatever the fuck you feel like. So then he goes home, and he's dressed up like a member of the Beatles. And so he, like, his, his dream is to become the fifth Beatle. The fifth Beatle, even though there wasn't a Beatle the other night. Oh, yeah. Um, and he goes like, it was like, Paul, John, George. No, no, no. It's, no, it was Paul, George, John, Georgie. Well, Ringo, at least it's Ringo. Oh, well, yeah, it was Ringo, sorry. Uh, no, he said that Georgie. No, he said that uh, George. George, George, Georgia, <laughs> no. drawer, drawer, Georgia. To so watch. it's really creepy. And the mom's just wondering what the fuck he's doing, and then he just starts singing like or like playing fucking Beatles songs. And he's like Beatles, right, the Beatles. Um. So yeah. So then, like, they can't convince Naoto to like trans to combine with Gridman. So then Gridman's just like, all right, fine. And he like summons, he shoots lasers out of his eyes through the screen. To Onto activate the, the primal acceptor. Yeah, the acceptor, and like turns into a grid man. So then he's attacking, but then all of a sudden, uh, like Hunter's part's like, oh, this is a chance to get like control of grid man because like uh, Takashi's like, oh, we'll defeat him, we got him, and like literally Hunter's part goes, no, I don't want to fight him like this. This isn't fair. Like a grid man's like on the floor pleading. He's like, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. And Contage Fire's like, I, I can't kill him like this. Stupid. Where, where, where's the dignity? Yeah, so instead he thinks of the idea, oh, we'll just get him to work for us. And so we get, like, evil controlled Gridman. He actually looks fucking cool because he's got, like, blue eyes and blue... Yeah, corrupt Gridman. Yeah, it was really cool. So I hope a figure, we get a figure of that. Yeah, yeah, the figure art just comes with, like, exclusive pieces for that. That'd be awesome. But yeah, so, like, Yuka, uh... Yuka and uh, Ipe, they uh, program a co- no. Ipe sends in God Xenon to fight Gridman. Optimus Prime. Yeah, Optim- yeah, Optimus Prime. And uh, so all are one. So all are one, bitch. And they can, and so then they have to figure out something. So then Yuka sends Gridman a special secret message, and it convinces him to change back to his normal self. Yeah, no, that's the reason. And we find out at the end of the episode what that message was, because Ipe asks what he sent, what she sent him, and she was like, "Well, none of your goddamn business." <laughs> and apparently, she sent to uh, Naruto, "I the words, I love you." Aww. So now he fully knows and is aware that Yuka likes Naruto, and Naruto also likes Yuka. No, I still prefer the Kaiju Club romance. Oh yeah, it was funny too. Like other other people were getting like convinced to like do whatever the fuck they wanted. Yeah. So, like this one woman decided to say screw her diet, start eating ice cream and stealing people's ice cream. And Stop then, being like, polite. Uh, a guy fucking like pulls up a woman's dress to like see her underwear, and I was like, whoa. That okay? That reminded me of a, a quick scene from Jetman, where like uh, three warriors from from another dimension come in and they lift up the blue ring, you know, the blue ranger skirt, and they're like, oh. Uh, like the youngest guy, he's like, "Oh, it's the w- it's a way of uh, introduction in our dimension." Like the White Ranger looks at the other female. Is that true? And she's like, "No." Like she like she says no in like the happiest voice. Like, no, nah, he's just a fucking sick perv. I shouldn't swear. This, sh- this show won't get money. <laughs> oh, it's fine. The- I I need this show to make money. So that was really cute, um, and just, yeah, so, oh yeah, we also got the do as you told me. Yeah, 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 according to the subs, it's the do as you told me. Meme, yeah. Me- Did um, I say meme? Yeah, you said meme. <laughs> um, so yeah, so overall this is a good episode too, it was really fun. Like I said, I love when they involve the side characters, so I'm glad we got the parents involved. Because, you know, we all got nine episodes left, what, what could happen? Yeah. Um, so I'd say out of all the episodes, I enjoyed the most was probably episode 30 of Gridman and the Tig episode. I would say one of my favorites this episode, definitely Gridman episode 30. So, like, that's number one. Number two would be Ultraman episode 33. Okay. Tig episode 33 would be the third. And then my least favorite episode was probably the dog, the, the dog episode. Yeah. The dogs were cute. Do- yeah, pretty much it. The dogs were cute, but that was pretty much it. And, like, I'm not a fan of seeing animals 
in, in, in danger. Yeah, yeah, like animals in danger. Even if it is like a science fiction show, it's like I, I'm not a fan for that. Dude, you should have seen me ball my eyes out when Jenis and Zoo Oger destroyed a cat. It it was someone's cat. That poor cat. That poor cat. Um. So yeah. So that's that's it for this episode. Yeah. That's... Episode one hundred and ten. We're back, baby. We're, we're, to- we're totally the first time. We're, we're schwa, baby. Uh. 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 <laughs> wow. We're back, baby. We're back, baby. Yep. Yeah. We're officially back. Oh, uh, yeah. I spelled officially wrong. Alrighty. <laughs> so I guess that's it for now. We'll see you all next time. And as always, schwa for now. Schwa for now. <laughs>